Hey guys, so this is going to be a new series that will be coming to this channel, and as the title suggests, the series will consist of short videos featuring 5 console mods that you guys suggest I cover. The series won't have a regular upload schedule, it will just kind of be whenever I happen to receive 5 suggestions, so if you want to be featured in the next video, just leave a comment with a mod suggestion and I'll try my best to include it in the next episode. Like always, all mods featured in the video will be in the video description below, with links and timestamps so you can easily find them. So enough talking, up first is Stained Glass Commonwealth. I don't often cover settlement mods, and if that's something you guys would like to see more of, just let me know, but this was brought to my attention by Lone Survivor 2135 This mod is really neat. It adds over 6,200 stained glass items to the workshop. I can't explain the entirety of this mod because it's so big, but just look at how nice some of these objects look, especially the light and reflections. You can see here with the Nuka-Cola lamp, it reflects off the table and just looks really, really good. Same with some of the other lamps and how they reflect off the wall and floor. It just adds a really nice look to your settlement, but it doesn't stop there. There are stained glass walls, windows, furniture, roofs, doors, and way more to give you ultimate variety. And check this out. When messing around with this mod, I made this little masterpiece of a structure. I know it's pretty terrible, but I just wanted to show you guys some of the cool things you can do with this. But that said, you'll need the mod settlement menu manager, and also contraptions, wasteland workshop, nuka world, and far harbor. So if you're a non-DLC player, this one really isn't an option. The other thing with this is that the file size is pretty large at 292 megabytes. But if you're a settlement builder and you have the extra space, this one might be a solid addition to your load order. Next up is combustible oil lamps. This mod was suggested by Zanzibar. This one is interesting. It's pretty small in terms of what it adds to the game but what it adds is actually really cool and definitely realistic. Basically, it makes it so that oil lamps explode when you shoot them, and if there are enemies near them, they will actually catch fire for 10 seconds and can die, which is really cool. After you destroy the lamps, they will respawn after 24 hours, but one thing I noticed when testing this mod was that not all of the lamps actually explode. Like, here's a good example of that. I shoot this one here, and it actually explodes, then immediately after I shoot this one, and all of a sudden nothing happens. Like, I wish this one was a little more consistent, but when it works, I truly like the mod. The file size for this one is only 1.5 megabytes, so I guess it doesn't really hurt to have it. It. And I mean, maybe I did something wrong when using it, but the inconsistency with this mod makes it a little hard to fully enjoy. Third is Militia Rifle, suggested by Jesus Kun. This mod adds a highly customizable weapon of Fallout 4 that is added to the leveled list, so you'll find it on enemies once you activate the mod. But if you don't feel like waiting to find it, there's one in the Ranger Cabin under the broken bed. One thing I noticed with this mod though is that the first time you pick it up, like what you're seeing here, the colors will be super distorted, but fear not. After reading through the comments on the mods page, someone mentioned that it will work fine after saving, quitting, then reloading, and as you can see, it worked perfect. I like this mod. For around 23 megabytes, you get some serious customization and a gun that works really well. Definitely recommend checking this out if you're searching for new guns. I'm not sure if the color distortion will happen to everyone, but if it happens to you, you'll know what to do. Fourth is Virgil's Evil Laboratory. This one was recommended by TJ What's It To Ya. This one is pretty interesting. It's obviously not a mod that will impact your game too much, but for what it does, it's certainly well done. The mod totally renovates Virgil's lab in the Glowing Sea to something a little more high-tech and evil. I like the added plants and the pet mole rat, the test tube super mutant is pretty cool looking as well, and the dead super mutant with the machine in its chest on the table is definitely pretty sinister. Overall, I like the new laboratory, and honestly, I like it a lot more than the vanilla one. This one comes in at a tad under 7 megabytes. The last mod coming up is more of a comparison, but Devin Kuhn wanted to know if there was much of a difference between another green mod and the desaturated version, so I figured this might be a good time to check that out. So on the left here is the regular version, and on the right is the desaturated version. The difference is pretty subtle, but the desaturated version certainly leaves us with a green, yet not too green feel to the environment, which I actually really like. You can tell the rocks have a different texture in this clip. For example, the desaturated version has a more brown look to them. Interestingly enough with this clip, and this is actually the same exact tree, but the tree is totally different between the two versions, which took me by surprise. And in this clip you can tell that the ground is a bit different as well. So I think for the most part, in terms of differences, that's pretty much what you're looking at. I'm comparing the non-DLC versions here, but there are DLC versions available for these that I will also link in the description as well. And to be more clear about what's being compared, I'm using the desaturated AGM non-DLC with the extra tree add-on, versus the AGM regular non-DLC version with the same extra tree add-on. The reason I'm not comparing the LOD versions is because there isn't exactly a desaturated version with LOD, so I thought the comparison would be invalid had I compared them that way. The desaturated version also works with the extra tree add-on. Even though it doesn't say desaturated, it will still work and from what I understand that's how the author intended it to be. The file size for these are both around 290 megabytes, and the extra tree add-on will add you an additional 1.3 megabytes. So for load order with this one, I recommend keeping these at or at least close to the bottom of your load order, and then putting the extra tree add-on above the AGM base mod. And also know that you can only have one of the base mods instead at once. Because if you download both the desaturated version and the saturated version, they kind of do this weird deleting thing where they kind of cancel each other out and then don't show up in your load order anymore, yet they're still installed taking up space, so you have to research the mod, then delete it, and it's just kind of a mess, so just make sure you only use one at a time. So that will do it for the first episode of 5 Community Mod Suggestions. Like I said in the beginning, if you want to be featured in the next episode, just leave a comment below with a mod you want me to review, and I will try to fit it into a future episode. If you liked the video, be sure to leave a thumbs up as it's the easiest way to show support, and if you want, feel free to subscribe to 
the channel for more content just like this. But before the video ends, I just want to make a quick progress note that the channel has reached nearly 700 subscribers and over 50,000 video views. That is seriously insane and I honestly can't believe the channel has come this far and that is all thanks to you guys. So I just want to thank everyone who has supported the channel so far, even if you're brand new here. Catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Thank you.